Well, welcome back, folks. Uh, sorry it's been a couple of weeks since we've had a video. Uh, and in the last three weeks since the last one, there's actually been about 27 hours worth of work that's occurred on the airplane. And But unfortunately, a lot of it is very boring work. What you see me doing here is, is the lovely task of deburring. Uh, every single hole that was drilled since the last time that you guys saw these elevators, I have to take them apart and then use a simple little tool that gets rid of all the little metal burrs and allows for there to be a smooth transition. I also go back through and retouch up the edges to make sure that there's nothing on the edges. And then in addition to that, I have to uh, scuff each of the individual parts so that way the primer will adhere to it that you guys are going to see here in just a little bit. And then what you see me also doing is, is dimpling all the holes. And what the dimples do is they allow the rivets to sit flush uh, into the skin so that way the airplane will be able to go faster. Um, and unfortunately, all that work of putting it all together that you guys saw, it all has to come apart. So that's what you see me doing here. Uh, one of the other things that I have to do is any of the customizations that I have done, which one of the big ones that you're going to see here for the elevators here very momentarily is for the static wicks. And that's what you see me doing right here. And I'm installing the static wicks because I think that they're necessary. Some people say not, uh, but I do believe that they are. Um, so uh, I had to drill the holes, uh, build the doubler plates, and get everything installed for those. Um, and, and there's nothing in the kit that tells me exactly how to do this. I'm having to use other people's information and do it myself. So... Um, Fast forward a couple of days, actually about two weeks, and what you see me doing here is just getting everything ready to prime. I'm uh, taping up the back sides of the skins off in the far left-hand corner there. Um, the There's the little section where the trailing edge is glued on. It's glued on with a very strong glue that uh, makes super glue look chintzy and weak. Or a week. Um, so I'm uh, taping those off so that way we have a good adherence. Um, and then next what you're going to see me doing is, is you're going to see me actually starting to do the uh, uh, priming. I'm not going to bore you guys with watching me prime. This took me about four hours to prime everything from beginning to end, so you're just going to see me do just a couple of pieces and parts here. Part of the four hours is because my primer, or my paint gun that I've been using, um, finally met the end of its lifespan, and um, it, I've cleaned it a million times, and it just it finally got clogged up or something and quit working so I ordered some more off of Amazon that should be here momentarily um, or within the next day or so however I did get everything primed uh, I don't think you see me in this video but I actually was using a much larger paint gun which is just horrible but um, I was using that um, so uh, fast forward again next day and all the pieces and parts are green now yay um, uh, what you're going to see me doing next is, well, obviously I've got to re-tag everything and get all the tags back on uh, for um, that way I know what, what parts go where. And that's part of the battle is when I'm doing all this priming of being able to keep everything uh, straight. Um, and then I put this in here just so you guys know I do clean up from time to time. And what you were seeing me do, basically anytime I'm going from major step to major step, I'll actually... Uh, clean up the workshop just because I like having a clean workshop while I'm working. And now we're off to final assembly. And what you see me doing here is getting the tip ribs uh, assembled. And this is where you start with the, you rivet the, the webs or the two flat surfaces together uh, with 4-4 rivets. And two of them are flush rivets that go into there because there's a counterbalance that sits inside of there that you need to be able to have the clearance for. Um, what you're going to see me start doing here in a moment is, is putting the, the skins on. I was only able to get one of them done this day and because uh, I had to go to work. And then you'll see me uh, on the next day, which will start here momentarily, you'll see me get the other one done. Um, so now that I'm on to the final assembly, uh, there will be lots of riveting. And it's a little bit more exciting to watch this thing coming together. Um, yeah, what you're seeing here is, is that I'm clicking the, the skins for the tips together, and then from there I end up uh, riveting them on with 3-3.5s, uh, 
and um, it's quite the time consuming process. Um, just to do the skin alone takes about 35 to 40 minutes because the other side I did by itself and so I was able to time it out here. So um, I, as I'm going forward here, I should be able to, uh, like I said, have a little bit more exciting stuff. Uh, what she's only doing there was actually answering my phone uh, when work had called to say, hey, would you like to come in and work overtime? And I said yes. Um, and then here's me finishing up uh, those uh, that other tip. I believe this is the left side. The right side was what I had done the day before. Um, and so uh, I will leave it at that, and I will shut up and let you guys finish watching here for the next... Uh, 30 seconds or so and uh, appreciate you guys subscribing appreciate you guys watching and thank you very much